the package description of the drug states 500 mg of paracetamol is present but in reality packet contains only 200 mg what is the terminology used for this this is called adulteration so section 501b of the food and drug and cosmetic act says that what the drug is purported to be represented as a drug according to the PACS uh, information if it is not matching that standard then that is called as adulteration is what you need to basically remember <clears throat> What is the trait which is useful to identify a female skull from that of the male skull? My question to all of you. In exam hall, I know what is your plan. You want to immediately start checking others. Their, how are their eyebrows and uh, all that, right? Yeah, that's one way of doing that. So... The frontal and parietal eminences are more prominent um, in the female skull compared to that of the male skull, which is a differentiator. Typically, the male's cranial mass is more blocky and massive compared to that of the females, which is more rounder and tapers at the top. Then the female's supraorbital margin is sharper and the male's is rather round and dull the supraorbital margin that is the reason sunayana meenakshi is the name going to girls but not for boys right zygomatic bone is more pronounced in the male skull mandible of the female is more rounded whereas the male is more squared and uh, males have a deeper cranial mass and the uh, Superciliary arch is large and more pronounced in the case of the males is what you need to fundamentally remember. So a square chin, acute angle, mastoid process, a developed ridge where the neck muscles attach and a larger brow ridge and a sloping forehead characterize a male skull. Whereas a sharper upper margins of the orbit, a smaller brow ridge and more vertical forehead, more vertical forehead rather than slopy. And the neck muscle attachment is typically not that prominent and uh, less pronounced mastoid in the case of the females compared to that of the mastoid in the males is much more prominent and more pointed chin with a wider angle of the jaw is what you typically see the wider angle of the jaw in the case of the female skull is what you have to ultimately remember so once more doctor what is there in the examiner's question bank male female skulls are watching at you skeletal differences are watching at you one more question can come in the exam hall so that should be your goal and this is one of the high yield topics uh, among the 650 topics given to you this also falls one 18 year old girl was brought to your clinic non-attainment of the mean arc breast has developed but there is no uterus no pubic hair no axillary hair chromosomal pattern is xy even on telephone you should answer testicular feminization syndrome otherwise called Androgen insensitivity syndrome is the one which you need to basically remember. So, every day by the time it is 6 o'clock, like our childhood, we used to read the Chandamama book. Bhetal ne fir ake Vikramadits ko leke jarahe. Like that, I come every day to lift you, all guys, to tell you a lot of stories what happened. So now what is the story of androgen insensitivity syndrome? Wo kahani kya hai? Kaise aage bada? Betal ko pucha vikramadit ne. So what is your answer? 
Typically on the Y chromosome, there is a gene called SRY. And this SRY gene will enable the gonad to become a testis. Testis has got the Leydig cells and Sertoli cells. Sertoli cells produce Mullerian inhibiting substance, which typically degenerate the Mullerian ducts. Leydig cells produce the testosterone. And typically, testosterone will make the Wolfian ducts to degenerate. So, I mean, prevent the Wolfian ducts to degenerate. Whereas in these people, there is a defective androgen receptor where when testosterone tries to act on its end organs, for example, why do you develop a axillary hair and why do you develop uh, uh, the pubic hair? It is because of the action of the androgen on the receptor. So receptor level insensitivity, if it is there, then axillary and pubic hair doesn't develop is what need to be remembered. Then why does breast develop is a very important question. Whether you are a male or a female, if you have estrogen abundantly enough, that is enough to develop the breast. So breast does not require any special uh, reasons. That's the reason why there is a gynecomastia in people with liver cirrhosis because in cirrhosis of the liver, estrogen metabolism doesn't occur. That's the reason estrogen remains increased and that lead to development of the gynecomastia. That's the reason breast is well developed. So this is a typical example of a patient with androgen insensitivity, a blind ending pouch like vagina. Uparka uterus doesn't form, but the lower part, the blind ending vagina still develops. Typically, that is what you see in androgen insensitivity syndrome. So, upper vagina is not, upper vagina is the one which is typically in case of androgen insensitivity is absent. And even uh, if you take the mayer lokitansky kustner hoster syndrome where Mullerian agenesis is there, there also the upper vagina is absent because the same Mullerian um, origin is there for the upper vagina and the uterus. So that is the reason the upper vagina and uterus are typically absent in case of both androgen insensitivity and the Mullerian agenesis. But gonads, it is the ovary, actually karyotype is XX in Mullerian agenesis or otherwise called Meyer, Rokitansky, Kastner, Hosner. Whereas it is a testis in the case of the androgen insensitivity. Even that testis is undescended testis. Obviously, there is no scrotum. So that is the reason. Breast development is normal in both androgen insensitivity and Mullerian agenesis. But the pubic hair development is normal in Mullerian agenesis, but it is sparse in case of androgen insensitivity. And if you look at the karyotype, it is 46XX in uh, Mullerian agenesis, but 46XY in case of the androgen insensitivity syndrome is what you have to basically remember. So hypothalamus produces GnRH, which acts on anterior pituitary. Anterior pituitary stimulates FSH and LH, typically acting on the ovary. Ovary produces estradiol. Estradiol acts on the endometrium and typically the action of that will ultimately lead to the formation of menstruation. So if you look at the androgen insensitivity syndrome, they have a defective androgen receptor. That is the main problem. XY karyotype and uh, they produce testosterone, but testosterone cannot act on receptors. That's the reason the axillary and pubic hair is not developed. And that is the reason their levels of testosterone are typically increased. Because problem is not with the production of testosterone. Whereas testosterone is produced, but it is not able to act on receptor. That's the reason serum testosterone levels are high. Whereas in Kleinfelter syndrome, what is the problem? They have a hyalinization of the testis. That is the reason testosterone are low, levels are low in case of the Kleinfelter is what you need to remember. So how do you want to manage the androgen insensitivity syndrome patients? You need to do a orchidectomy in the late teens 
is considered to be the management of choice and then you need to do the vaginal dilatation of the blind ending pouch give hormone replacement therapy and uh, enable the person depending upon his sexual orientation to remain as a male because karyotype is xy or whether he wants to become a woman uh, basically patient's uh, wish need to be honored 